In this video, you'll learn how PHP frameworks such as Laravel and Symfony organize the code that handles routes into controllers. So far in this series, we've added a router that maps HTTP methods and URL paths to code that runs when the route matches. This code is known as the handler for this route. In here at the moment, we're just returning a response whose body contains a simple string. But we could do anything in here, such as connect to a database to retrieve some data, process a form and so on. So having anonymous functions like this is only really suitable when we have very few routes with simple handlers. Otherwise, this list of routes and their handlers will very quickly become really long and unmaintainable. The solution to this is to define the handler code elsewhere. In frameworks, this is typically done in methods in classes. These classes are commonly known as controllers. So instead of these anonymous functions, let's create controller classes to handle these routes. First, in the source folder, let's create a folder called controllers. Then inside this folder, let's create a new file called homecontroller.php. Note I'm using Pascal case for both the folder and the file name. We'll see why this is important shortly. Inside this file, let's add the PHP opening tag and enable strict type checking. Let's set the namespace for this class to app controllers and then add the class definition. Note we need to make sure the class name and the controllers namespace match the folder and the file name. Inside this class, let's add a public method called index. This is the method that's going to run when the home page root matches. In the bootstrap file, the handler for the homepage route is currently defined as this anonymous function. So let's select the contents of this function, cut them and paste them in the index method in the controller class. We also need to include the use statements for the utils and response classes that this code uses. Let's also add the response class as the return type declaration for the method. Then, back in the bootstrap file, we can use this class as the handler for the home page. One way to use this class would be to require the file the class is defined in, then create a new object of that class, call the index method on it, and return its return value. Let's give that a try in the browser by looking at the home page, and it works as before. However, there's a simpler alternative to specifying a handler that's in a separate class. First though, we need to set up an autoloader so that we don't have to explicitly require the class file like this. We could do this by adding our own autoloader, but as we're already using Composer, let's use Composers. In Composer.json, let's add an autoload section and a PSR4 section inside that. Let's specify that any class in the app namespace can be loaded from the source folder. Then, on the command line, let's run the composer dump autoload command to regenerate the autoload script. Now, back in the bootstrap file, we can remove the require line that's loading the home controller class. And in the browser, this still works as before. Now we can change the way we specify the handler in this route. There are a couple of ways to do this. First, instead of a closure, let's specify a string containing the controller class name, two colons followed by the method name. Let's try this and it still works as before. The other way to specify a controller is to provide an array where the first element is the class name and the second is the method. I'll use the class constant to get a string that contains the class name. Note that this is the style that Laravel uses. This still works in the same way when we run it. With this second way of doing it, we can add a use statement to import the controller class into the current namespace. We can then remove the namespace from the class in the root. Note we can't do this with the previous method of having a single string, 
as the use statement isn't taken into account. Before we try this, let's also change the method that we're calling on the router to the get method. Then we can remove the first argument. And this still works in the same way. Now, however, the root definition is very compact. For the two product related routes, let's do the same thing we just did for the home page. Let's start by making a copy of the home controller class and calling it product controller. In here, let's change the class name accordingly and the contents of the response body in the index method. Then, back in the bootstrap file, let's change the slash products route to run the index method in the products controller. And of course, this needs a corresponding use statement for the products controller class. Let's try that. And it works. Note that the products controller class was loaded automatically with the autoloader. Next, let's add a method to the product controller for this slash product route. To do that, let's cut the anonymous function from here and paste it in the product controller. Then let's add the public visibility modifier to this and call the function show. Let's also set the return type declaration to the response class. Just for completeness, Let's also add type declarations to the arguments of this method. And this of course needs a use statement for the server request class. Then back in the bootstrap file, we can specify this controller and method in the handler for the root. Finally in here, we can remove the use statements for the utils and response classes as we're no longer using them in this script. Let's try the individual product route in a browser, and this still works as before. So now the handlers for all our defined routes are defined in controllers. This means the route definitions in here are much cleaner and simpler to understand. And the handler code is encapsulated in methods in controller classes, making it more robust and easier to maintain. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.